Welcome to the driveway. Uh, I've caught another pest animal in a live trap and I wanted to tell you a little bit about it. This is an eastern eastern gray squirrel. Let me see if I can get him close. These little guys are everywhere. You know, we're in northeast Georgia. They like to build nests up in the forks of trees. They also get in people's attics a lot where it's nice and warm and they make a hell of a noise when they do that. And thump, 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 thump all night. If you've ever heard that, you got a squirrel probably. The droppings look a lot like mice droppings, so unless you see the squirrel, sometimes think they got a, people think they got a lot of mice. These are pretty interesting little animals. Uh, a lot of things people don't know about them. Uh, like I said, they build little nests up in trees called drays, and even though a kitty don't bother. Uh, sometimes they'll get up there, the male and female, during the mating season will actually share one of these big leaf nests. And you can see them up in trees if you're out in the woods. There's these big basketball or bigger size gobs of leaves up in the trees. And that's a squirrel nest. So sometimes they'll share. In the cold, cold winter they'll share. They'll, they, there can be a couple of adult squirrels up there. So they're not as uh, solitary as, as people like to think. People generally say that they only see one or two uh, out in the woods. Uh, where I found this little guy, there were about eight of them. They were attacking bird feeders. So if there's food, if there's a big food source, they'll all congregate, but they fight like cats. It's really interesting, and, and their vocalizations are a lot like cats. I mean, they're rawr, rawr, when they're fighting, and they just tear each other up. And of course, when they're running, they're skinning the bark off trees and everything else. They make a huge racket. It is unbelievable how an animal this small can can uh, make a noise. You can probably hear him growling a little bit. Let's see if you can hear that. Make some racket, buddy. Make some racket. Yeah, he's, he's not happy. Uh, something else people don't know about these things is they're actually carnivorous. Now, people don't believe me when I tell them that, but if food gets scarce, if the mass doesn't fall, if there aren't a lot of acorns on the ground, these little guys will eat frogs, lizards, they'll eat eggs, little birds, anything they can catch. And uh, I think almost anybody that's ever found antlers in the woods, they're, they'll see that they're gnawed on, sheds that are out in the woods. These guys will chew up turtle shells and, and shed antlers, and they, I guess they get calcium out of it. But, uh, it is interesting they'll eat frogs and they'll eat meat when they have to. They'll even eat other baby squirrels if they can find a nest. But that's only in times of famine. It's, it's Dahmer party kind of stuff, you know. So uh, they are practical when they have to be. They, they don't limit themselves to a vegetarian diet. Also, these guys move forests. It's kind of interesting how God does things. One of the smallest animals in the forest is actually responsible for forest creep. So they bury a lot, they bury thousands of little caches of, of nuts that have fallen off the trees and as they do that they only remember a certain percentage of where they're hidden so the forest will actually expand. They'll go around to the edge of a field and dig little holes and plant their acorns and then they won't get to those to eat them over the course of the winter and uh, little oak trees will sprout and other trees, any kind of nut tree. But I think that's fascinating that uh, Forest ride, on, forest ride on the backs of these uh, tiny little tree rats. So they're well designed for what they do. Now, as far as diseases, I always like to give pros and cons. Very nutritious little animal, somewhat easy to catch if you're not using your bare hands. They, they trap pretty easy. Uh, I, I knew a, a guy from Cambodia once that could sneak up and grab them by the tail. I, he's the only guy I know that can do that. So. If you can do that, kudos to you. But um, there is one thing that I've read about. Uh, there, was, there were several families up in Kentucky. When I was a kid, my grandfather used to like squirrel brains, and he would kill a mess of these, and on the table there would be these little, these little skulls, and people would crack them open and suck the brains out, cooked. But uh, evidently these families up in Kentucky started to get a wasting disease, kind of like Pushville Jacobs or uh, we call uh, a variant of it mad cow disease people get from beef sometimes. Well, it turned out that there was a population of these squirrels in Kentucky that had a, a type of wasting disease that was very similar to, to 
mad cow disease, and people were actually catching it. Very few people were involved, but they all died. So never heard of that since, never heard of it before. That's just kind of an interesting little fact. I try to stay away from any cerebrospinal tissue on any animal just because stuff like that pops up every now and then and it scares me. So if you like squirrel brains, go for it, but it's kind of like eating an oyster out of the ocean. If you get a bad one, you might wake up dead. Why risk it? This is a eastern gray squirrel. Neat little animals. And I'm glad I got to show them to you today. Alright, thanks. One more close up. Can we get a real super close up? There he is. See his little hands? Okay, kitties, y'all are just being mean.